Federalism is a system in which the governmental power is divided between a central authority and its various constituent units. For example, Belgium has a federal form of government, whereas countries like Sri Lanka and the UK have a unitary system of government. Under a unitary system, there is only one level of government. There may be subunits like state governments, but they are under the absolute subordination of the central government. Under the federal system, there are two or more tiers or levels of government. The central government, the state government, and as an exception in India, a third tier or local self-government. However, in federalism, each tier has its own jurisdiction in specific matters of legislation, taxation, and administration. Jurisdiction is the legal authority and can be defined in terms of geographical area. Federalism provides constitutional guarantees for the existence and authority of each tier of government. In addition, the basic provisions of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one tier of government. Such changes require the approval of both tiers of the government. Every level is free in its own way to impose taxes and raise funds through remunerative enterprises. However, the sources of revenue for each tier are also clearly specified. An independent judiciary is the very essence of federalism. The courts have the power to interpret the constitution and the powers of the different tiers of government. The highest court of the land acts as an arbitrator in case of a dispute between different tiers of government. Federalism has the dual objectives of promoting unity of the country and recognizing regional diversity by way of mutual trust and agreement of living together. The balance of power between the center and state governments can vary from federation to federation. It depends mainly on the historical context in which the federation was formed. There are two ways in which federations can be formed coming together federations and holding together federations. In the coming together federations, independent states come together on their own to form a bigger unit, so that by pooling sovereignty and retaining identity, they can increase their security. USA, Switzerland and Australia are examples of coming together federations. In these countries, all the constituent states usually have equal power and are strong vis-à-vis -vis the federal government. On the other hand, in holding together federations, a large country decides to divide its power between the constituent states and the national government. India, Spain and Belgium are examples of holding together federations. In this type of federation, the central government tends to be more powerful with regard to the states. The different constituent units of the federation too may have unequal powers. For example, Jammu Kashmir in India has been granted special status. India is a union of states based on the principles of federalism. Our country has a three-tier system of government, namely, the union government, state governments, and the local government that consists of gram panchayats and municipalities. The Indian Union is based on the ideology of holding together federation, whereby the power is divided between the respective states and the central government. However, this power sharing can vary across different units of the federation. For example, Jammu and Kashmir enjoys more power than other states. On the other hand, the Union territory is virtually dependent on the center. 
These unique power sharing ways make the Indian system of governments quasi federal in nature. The constitution provides threefold distribution of legislative power between the central and the state governments. Therefore, there are three lists, namely the union list, state list, and the concurrent list. The union list includes 97 subjects of national importance such as defense, atomic energy, foreign affairs, railways, banking, posts and telegraphs. These matters need a uniform policy throughout the country and are hence included in this list. Laws on these union list subjects can solely be made by the parliament. The second list is the state list that consists of 66 subjects of state and local importance such as police, trade, commerce, agriculture and irrigation. The state legislative alone can make laws related to subjects mentioned in the state list. The third list is the concurrent list which includes subjects of common interest to both the union and state government. For example, forests, trade unions, marriage, adoption and succession. Both the union and state governments can make laws on the concurrent list, but in case of conflict, the laws by the union government are given more importance. There are some subjects that do not fall under any of the lists or came up after the constitution was made. These are known as the residuary. The union government has powers to make laws on these residuary subjects. For example, computer hardware and software. A holding together federation does not give equal powers to its constituent units, which means that all states of the Indian Union do not have identical powers. States like Jammu and Kashmir enjoy a special status with its own constitution, and many provisions of the Indian constitution are not applicable to the state. On the other hand, there are some units of the Indian Union which enjoy very little powers, like Chandigarh, Lakshwadeep, or the capital city of Delhi. These are known as union territories since they are too small to be independent states or even merge with existing states. The union territories are governed directly by the central government. It is very difficult to make changes in India's power sharing arrangement as any change has to be approved by a one-third majority in both the houses of parliament and then by the legislatures of half of the total number of states. Another important aspect that makes India a federal country is the judiciary. The judiciary administers both union and state laws and in case of any dispute about the division of power, the High Court and Supreme Court make a decision. Hence, the judiciary acts as the guardian of Indian federalism. The real success of federalism in India can be attributed to the nature of democratic politics in our country, that is, spirit of freedom, secular outlook, respect for diversity and the urge to live together. The most important tests for this success were the creation of linguistic states, language policy and center state relations. At the time of independence in 1947, there were many states that had more than one local language. However, in 1956, under the State Reorganization Commission, the states were created on the basis of language. During this time, many small states disappeared and new ones came into existence. Did you know? Bilaspur was an independent state till 1954 after which it was merged as a district in the state of Himachal Pradesh. In 1966, Haryana was created from the state of Punjab. Similarly, the 16 northern Telugu-speaking districts of Madras state became the new state of Andhra. Some states like Nagaland, Uttarakhand and Jharkhand were created 
to recognize their cultural and ethnic differences. The formation of linguistic states has made the country more united and easier to administer. Another test for the success of the Indian Federation was the framing of the language policy in a multilinguistic country. The Census of India held in 1991 identified 1500 distinct languages and grouped them under 114 major languages. Out of these 114 major languages, our constitution recognizes 22 scheduled languages. Hindi is the official language, although there are some states that conduct official work in their own local language. According to the constitution, the use of English as an official language was to stop in 1965. However, this did not happen due to the opposition and agitation of non-Hindi speaking states. The Official Language Act states that English would remain the official language of the country so long as non-Hindi speaking states desire. Restructuring and division of powers between the center and states is another factor that contributed to the success of federalism in India. At the time of independence, the central government and the state governments were ruled by the same political party, namely the Congress. After 1967, when some political parties from the opposition came to power in different states, the relations between the center and states began to change. The central government often misused powers and dismissed the state governments led by the rival parties. This was against the spirit of federalism. After 1990, all this changed when a coalition government was formed at the center. Regional parties became more powerful in the states and different parties formed an alliance. For example, the UPA and the NDA. Under this arrangement, the culture of power sharing and respect for the autonomy of state governments spread in India. The Supreme Court also made it difficult for the central government to dismiss the state governments in an arbitrary manner. As a result, with the era of the coalition government, the federal structure is more effective today than it was when the constitution came into force. Due to the massive diverse population, India has a three-tier system of government where the local government forms the third tier. In order to manage and resolve issues and problems of people at the local level and keep them united, power sharing within the state is essential. The process of taking away power from the central and state government and giving it to the local government is known as decentralization. To strengthen the local government and make decentralization more effective, several amendments have been made in the constitution concerning the Panchayati Raj and the Nagar Palika or municipality. According to these amendments, it is mandatory to hold regular elections for local government bodies. Seats are reserved in the elected bodies for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and other backward classes, and one-third of all positions are reserved for women. An independent state election commission has been created in each state to conduct panchayat and municipal elections. Moreover, the state governments are required to share some powers and revenue with local government bodies. Let's now take a look at the local governments that exist in rural and urban India. The rural local government popularly known as the Panchayati Raj consists of the Zilla Parishad, the Panchayat Samiti and the Gram Panchayat. The Gram Panchayat is a decision-making body present in each village or group of villages. It consists of ward members called Panch and a president called Sarpanch. They are directly elected by the adults of the ward or village. 
The Gram Panchayat works under the supervision of the Gram Sabha that consists of all the voters in the village. It meets twice or thrice in a year to approve the annual budget of the Gram Panchayat and to review the Panchayat's performance. The Gram Panchayats together form a Panchayat Samiti, also known as a block or mandal. The members of this body are elected by the members of the Panchayats in that area. All the Panchayat Samitis together form the Zilla Parishad. Members of the Lok Sabha and members of the Legislative Assembly, along with some other officials, are members of the Zilla Parishad. The urban local government or Nagar Palika comprises the municipal committees in towns and municipal corporations in big cities. The members are elected by the people. The three-tier system of government is the largest experiment in democracy conducted anywhere in the world. However, it's facing a few problems. For instance, Gram Sabhas are not held regularly and adequate resources are not given to local bodies. In certain cases, the state governments have not transferred power to local governments. Yet, this system has 36 lakh representatives in the rural and urban local governments and a significant participation of women. Despite certain problems, the presence of local governments and decentralization of power has helped strengthen democracy in the country.